Hey everyone, my name is Olaf, and in this video I will teach you how to make this exact domino simulation in Blender. As always, it's going to be quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so press S, then X to scale the cube on the X axis, and then press S, then Z to scale the object on the Z axis. And then we can go into the physics settings, and we can add the physics before we duplicate the object. So let's set the type to box and then the friction to one to add some friction to the object during the simulation. And then we can set the damping translation to uh, 0.35 and then the damping rotation to 0.6. And that makes the objects less shaky during the simulation. And then we can add a material as well. So just make sure the object has a material so that when we add the array modifier, all of these objects will have the same materials as well as the same physics settings. And then you can add as many pieces as you want to on the X and Y axis using the array modifier. I'm going to add 160 pieces on the X axis and around 80 on the Y axis. So just increase the value on the Y axis. As you can see, we now have a lot of domino pieces. And then you can change the distance between them using the offsets. You can also change the number of bricks by changing the uh, count value. And if you have a uh, fast computer, you can set it even all the way up to 400. But if you have a uh, slow laptop, for example, I would probably set it to below 100. And then maybe set it around 20 for the Y axis. Okay. And uh, I'm going to increase the distance between them on the X axis. And then next we need to create an object to uh, push these uh, domino bricks. So uh, let's press shift A to add a new object. And we can just add a cube. And then press S, then Y to scale it on the y-axis and press G then Y to grab it on the y-axis and then press S then Y once again to scale it on the y-axis. Okay, and then we can press number one for front view and then press R then Z to rotate it on the z-axis. So around here and then press G then X to grab it on the x-axis. And then I'm going to go to front view by pressing numpad one, and then press G to grab, and I'm going to grab it so that it uh, pushes the domino bricks from the top, like this. And then we can add some rigid body physics, in this case, passive physics animated because we're going to keyframe it, and then box collision. The friction to one, And then press Shift A. Now we're going to add the floor. So press S to scale. And then press G, then X to grab it on the X axis. And then G, then Z to grab it on the Z axis. And then before we continue, we can create another save. So press Control Shift S. And then we can increase the range of the viewport. So press N, go to view, and then increase the end clipping value like this. And then select the uh, domino bricks, go into the modifiers and apply the array modifiers so that we can turn these bricks into individual objects. So press tab and then P to separate. And then object, set origin, and then origin to geometry. And by giving the bricks individual origins, the physics simulation will work correctly. Okay, and then next we can animate this uh, object. We're just going to push the bricks. So press N, go to item, and then press I to keyframe the location. And then we can go 200 frames forward. And then press number seven for a top view. And then press G, then X to grab it on the X axis. And move it 
all the way until all of the bricks are pushed. And I press I to keyframe the new location. And then we need to add the rigid body physics for the floor as well. So add some passive physics and then set the collision shape to mesh, which in my experience works great for planes. And then I'm going to move it a bit closer. So G then set to grab it on the set axis and then go into the scene properties create another save and then we can do a test bake and after a few minutes of baking you will have a test bake I'm just going to press escape and see what it looks like this far and uh, as you can see it works and it pushes the domino bricks and the uh, domino effect continues after the object has pushed the bricks Okay, so let's create another save and this time we can delete this bake and uh, bake the whole simulation so i'm going to add 4000 frames and then bake the simulation and then after an overnight bake i decided to cancel it at around 2300 frames which uh, should be enough for an animation like this one and then switch to cycles and then use a gpu if you have one you can also use ev but i like the look of cycles at least with uh, these many objects then increase the render quality by increasing the number of samples and if you want to you can also enable the noising and when we go into render view you can see that we still do not have any lighting or any materials so we can search for the light. So I'm just going to type in light, select the light, turn it into a sun, and then we can set the strength to five. And then press R twice to rotate the sun freely. Okay. And then next, we can go into the world settings and make the background a bit lighter. So let's make it completely white. And then we can save one more time. And then next we can get to the domino pieces or the domino bricks, whatever you want to call them. And then I'm going to use a glossy shader. Just add whatever type of material you want to. And then add whatever color you want to. And I'm going to play around with the reference value. And then once you're done setting up the material that you like, we can go to the next step, which is to set up the camera. So press Control Alt Numpad Zero to set the camera to your current point of view. Then select the camera and increase the end value in the camera settings. And then you can lock the camera to view under view in the sidebar. And then we need to animate the camera as well. So we can start off here at the beginning of the animation. I press I to keyframe. And make sure to keyframe the rotation as well. Then we can move a few frames forward so around here. And then press R then set to rotate the camera on the Z axis. I press I and I to keyframe. And then we can move a bit uh, backwards. And then press I and I to keyframe. Okay, so now we have a nice camera animation as well. And then the next step will be to set up the outputs. And since we did not bake the whole thing, or at least I did not, I'm going to decrease the end value for the render. Okay, and now let's go to the output properties. I'm going to render this in 4K. You can just leave it at 100% if you want 1080p. And then select a folder for the final render. You can add that folder wherever you want on the computer. And then you can convert the PNGs to an MP4 file later. I have a tutorial on that on my channel. And then in the render properties, 
I'm also going to enable transparency for the background. That gives me more control over the whiteness of the background when I edit it later. Okay, and everything looks fine. And before I start the render, I'm just going to delete a few lines of bricks because one of them are not working. So I press up at seven for a top view. And I press B to box select. And then deselect the object that pushes the bricks. And then press X to delete. And after a few seconds, they are deleted and everything looks fine. So let's create one more save. And uh, let's do a, a test render before we do the final render. So in my case, it took around one and a half minutes to render one frame. And then you can multiply that by uh, 2300 and you can see that the render is going to be quite long for me. And then render animation to render the whole thing. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And more Blender tutorials coming very soon.